To start things off, I want to explain to you that I see Red Dead as a franchise and the two Red Dead Redemption games as a series within that franchise, just to clear up any possible confusion when I'm using those terms during the video. So let's get into the game. Red Dead Revolver came out in 2004 and was Rockstar's first try at a Wild Western video game. Fun fact, the game's development team, Angel Studios, initially started working on Red Dead Revolver under Capcom in the year 2000, but Take-Two acquired the studio in 2002 and they went on to release it under the Rockstar Games label. Although this is the founding father of the Red Dead franchise, without which the critically acclaimed Red Dead Redemption games would have never happened, it is by far not as well known and well received as its successors. Like them, this is a third person shooter, but there is one huge difference, unlike the Red Dead Redemption series, Red Dead Revolver is not an open world game. It is a linear level-based game with hubs in between. The graphics also lean more towards stylized than realistic and the gameplay and content differ quite a bit as well, although they do have their similarities in some aspects. But as this is a linear story-based game, why not get straight into the story? If you plan on playing this game for yourself and don't want to get spoiled, skip to the next timestamp in the video or in the description. You start off your journey as young Red Harlow, who comes storming to his father, Nate Harlow, who just arrived back home to Red and his mom with some good news about hitting a vein of gold, showing off his new revolver that each him and his partner got one of to symbolize their newly found wealth, and handing Red his old one so he can go practice at the shooting range. While Red is doing exactly that, his home suddenly gets attacked by some outlaws. He rushes to help his father, shooting some bad guys on the way. Unfortunately though, both his dad and his mom end up getting shot in the altercation. While Red is trying to get his dad to get up, an evil figure steps out at the flame and smoke to taunt him. Red grabs his dad's glowing hot revolver that's lying in the flames on the ground and fires a shot at the bad guy, burning his hand in the process. At least he does blow the guy's arm off. Next time we see Red, he's all grown up, walking with his dog and meeting a vendor whom he buys some stuff from, as they get approached by a couple of bandits who start a firefight. Bad idea. After taking them all out, Red and the vendor take their corpses to the Sheriff of Widow's Patch for a nice bounty, which they never get because the town is run over by bandits. Red Hollow quickly turns into John Wick as set bandits kill his dog. After wiping them all out, he helps Sheriff O'Grady get to Brimstone by train. While on their ride, the train gets attacked by robbers and Red has to defend it. Making it to Brimstone, Red gets to meet Sheriff Bartlett, who puts him onto some bounties. First one is Pig Josh. Hunting him down, Red first meets Jack Swift, a British gunslinger whom he cooperates with in order to take down his target. Swift tells him about Professor Perry and his circus crew, which he has to take down. This is where you take control over Jack Swift. After taking down said Professor Perry and his goons, Jack frees the hostage, who tells him about the sharpshooter competition in Brimstone, which earns the winner $5,000 in gold. You switch back to Red, whose next target is Bad Bessie. He goes hunting her down in the canyons and bringing her body back to Brimstone. Next on the hit list is Mr. Black, an ominous outlaw who hides out in the graveyard. Having put him into his own coffin, Red travels back to Brimstone to collect his bounty. The sheriff tells him that the wagon with the bank's gold hasn't arrived yet, so he has to go have a talk with the bank manager. Upon entering the bank, Red overhears a conversation between a young lady and the bank manager, talking about some gold in Bear Mountain. Red wants to know where the young lady lives to go pay her visit. This is where you switch to said young lady, who goes by the name of Annie Stokes. She travels to her farm to take out the bastards who tried burning it down. After having accomplished her goal, she meets Red by the entrance, who asks her about the gold mine in Bear Mountain. Annie tells him to visit the saloon in Brimstone to get some information. Red takes up on this advice and hears three bandits talk about a guy who lost his arm. Red, of course thinking about the guy who he shot the arm off as a kid, has to ask who that man is and how he lost his arm. The men antagonize him and it ends in a bar brawl. Red has to kick some ass and defeat the leader of the bandits when he gets arrested and put into a cell by Sheriff Bartlett. This is when Red reveals his true identity as the son of Nate Harlow. The Sheriff starts explaining to him what happened to his father. This is where you switch to General Diego. He's the ex-general of the Mexican army, now leading a renegade army, and despite his position, he still fights at the front line. This is probably one of my least favorite missions in the game because you have to defend NPCs who can get killed really quickly and there are no checkpoints at all, which is usually not a good mix. Anyway, Diego's mission is to take on the Yankee army and arm some bombs to blow up a bridge. After accomplishing this goal, his men capture a prisoner, whom they think is a spy. Said prisoner is willing to lead Diego to a gold mine just over the border if he lets him live. They agree to kill the prisoner's partner, who owns half the gold claim, and become partners. The game switches back to Red being freed from his prison cell by the sheriff, who is willing to drop all charges against him if he brings in yet another bounty. Red takes on the task, but gets captured by General Diego and Colonel Darren, who want to take him to the gold mine. 
Next you play as Shadow Wolf, a Native American who is actually Red's cousin and childhood friend. After years of thinking Red died with his parents in the assault, he realizes that Red is alive and in need of help. He tells his tribe about Red's capturing and goes on to rescue him. While being locked up in a cell in the mine, Red gets to know Buffalo Soldier, who has been a slave to Diego for years and wants to get out and help out Red seek revenge. Red takes out some bad guys on his way to escape the mine. This is where you play as Buffalo Soldier. He also has made it out of the mine and travels to Brimstone with the help of a traveler. Buffalo makes his way to Governor Griffin, warning him about Diego and asking him for help. This is where he realizes that the governor is actually a traitor working with Diego and he gets captured by Mr. Kelly, a gunslinger working for the governor. The game switches back to Red and Shadow Wolf, who find themselves in a small town attacked by Colonel Darren and bad guys with Gatling guns. Red manages to take down Darren and get revenge for his parents, but unfortunately Shadow Wolf doesn't make it out of this fight alive. Red goes after Diego next, who is on an armored train with his men. After a chase on horseback and a long fight, he takes out Diego and travels back to Brimstone and meets up with Jack and Annie who are eager to finally take part in the shooting competition. Being antagonized by Mr. Kelly, Red also agrees to take part. Red, Jack and Annie all make it through the preliminaries on the first day. On the next day, Red finally takes on Mr. Kelly. The governor takes the sheriff out of the play and disqualifies Jack and Annie. So now only Red and Kelly are left, which makes the duel the final one. Red wounds Kelly in the duel, but finally takes him out in town after a quick gunfight. Red, Jack and Annie team up to go after the traitorous governor. Arriving at his mansion, they have to take on hordes of bad guys and free Buffalo Soldier on their way up to the governor, who is hiding out on the mansion's roof. This is where the final fight takes place. Red, with the help of Buffalo, takes out all the henchmen and finishes of Griffin in a duel. The sheriff comes by and wants to hand Red the $5,000 prize money from the battle royale, but Red tells him to give it to his partners and wanders off into the distance. As to him, it never was about the money. Give it to them. It never was about the money. Obviously, this game doesn't have the same amount of content its successors have, but what does it have to offer? For one, after each mission you complete, there is a rating system which, based on your accuracy, damage taken, time and combo, unlocks new perks, weapons or characters. Then, in the hub world, you can also visit stores or saloons to buy certain items, upgrades or unlockables, which usually consist of showdown characters or stages. Speaking of the showdown mode, this is the multiplayer aspect of the game. Up to four players can compete against each other, picking up cards which provide a variety of advantages during a gunfight. This mode is pretty cool, but since it doesn't have an online feature, it was pretty useless to me playing only against bots, but I imagine this mode could be quite some fun with some friends and a couple of beers. Also built into this mode is a high noon option, which is a last man standing dueling contest. But since I don't really like the dueling mechanics in this game, I didn't actually notice this option when I was playing. So as you can see, there isn't really that much of significance to do after completing the story mode of this game. So let's just get into the gameplay. There are actually a couple of features that made it into the Red Dead Redemption series, such as jumping on a train from your horse's back, dueling, which in this game, as I said, is way more clunky and can therefore be challenging, and obviously the most iconic one, Deadeye. Deadeye pretty much works the same as in the successors, but as you play as multiple people during the story, they each either have some slight adaptations which change the mechanics and usages just a little bit, or they change the whole special attack around and it now does something completely different than the standard Deadeye. Dueling is pretty weird in this game, and to me it didn't feel very intuitive since you actually have to draw your weapon with the stick at the right time but then during aiming you have to wait for the right radical which gives you a critical hit instead of just a weak shot which consumes precious time. In the beginning this doesn't really pose a problem but later on when you're facing harder enemies those milliseconds can ruin your duel. Or maybe I'm just too dumb for this mechanic. Anyway, there are quite a lot of different weapons you can use as well, including throwables and explosives, and of course you also have your melee attacks, which are very clunky and I didn't find myself using them too much. All in all, the shooting itself is fine, but the rest of the controls are pretty clunky, which can be pardoned to some extent considering the age of the game. All I'm saying is someone a little younger who didn't experience the PS2 era might be turned off by the controls when downloading this game onto their PS5. But it's playable. The soundtrack to this game is pretty cool, reminding me of some Tarantino movies. It matches the tone of the game and gives off an epic feel. But the individual songs, at least to me, aren't as memorable as, for example, Bully's songs. But I guess for this type of game it's also just harder to make a memorable soundtrack considering the limitations of the setting and the historical era of the game world. At least it sounds good, even though I probably couldn't point out a specific song to you. So now that we have arrived at the end of this video essay, let's answer some important questions. Is this game as good as its successors? No, by far not. Is this game a masterpiece? Not really, it's decent. 
Is it worth playing? If you can look past the outdated controls and some of the annoying mechanics, it can be a fun experience and to be honest, the story is pretty good as well. The game doesn't take all that long to finish anyway, so just go ahead and try it out and maybe you will enjoy it. I, for one, had a decent amount of fun with the game. But however you look at it, you have to appreciate this game for what it is and for the franchise it birthed. Without this, we probably would have never received the two masterpieces that are Red Dead Redemption 1 and 2. And that's something if you ask me. Anyway, if you made it this far into the video, I hope that you enjoyed it to some extent and all I can say is that a like, sub or a comment would be greatly appreciated and I hope to see you guys for the next chaotic good video.